the life of an ant might just be one of the most brutal and antagonizing existences there are. You see, ants may be one of the most successful species to ever live, as they have been around for well over 100 million years and have occupied every corner of the world except Antarctica. But this also means that a whole array of sinister creatures has had the pleasure of evolving their entire way of life, specifically tailored towards different and very creative ways of dispatching ants. For example, the ant lion. This creature has to be the biggest camper in history. It can lie still in its little hole for months without eating. They basically set up their little fall trap by making a cone-shaped hole in very loose sand-like soil, only exposing its menacing jaws. When an ant happens to fall into their trap, they will have trouble climbing as the sand is rolling them down the more they struggle. The ant lion also takes advantage of this by throwing sand at them, making the ant struggle even more, which just speeds up the process. Eventually, the ant will get caught in its jaws and believe me, you definitely don't want to go out like this. The ant lion will quickly inject the ant with venom, paralyzing it and slowly liquefying the ant from the inside out, eventually basically drinking the ant like a smoothie. Another fellow ant liquefier is the assassin bug. This creature uses a lot of the same techniques as the ant lion. It uses its sharp, needle-like mouth part to pierce the ant's hard exoskeleton and basically suck out the ant's life essence, but that's not all. You see, the assassin bug is a bit of a quirky serial killer, as it likes to use the shells of its victims as a coat. It literally stacks dead ants on top of its back. But this is not just for looks. It's actually a perfect example of another predator that uses the ant's evolution against them. Scientists believe that the assassin bug basically cosplays as an ant to infiltrate heavily ant-populated parts of the jungle floor without getting eaten by the ant mafia itself. If you thought that was bad, just wait. It's going to get a lot worse from here on out. Meet the forid fly. This has to be one of the worst ways for an ant to perish. This fly will basically sneak up behind the ant, pierce it in the thorax, and lay an egg before leaving the crime scene. Now, this in itself does not kill the ant, but trust me, the ant definitely hoped it did, because what follows is something straight out of an alien movie. When this egg hatches inside the ant's living body, it will move itself up to its head and start feasting on the ant's insides. And remember, the ant is still alive at this point in the process, although slightly confused. The larva will feed on the ant for several weeks before taking control over the ant, leading it to an ideal birthing location. Now, the real gruesome stuff starts. The larva will, at this point, release an enzyme, making the ant's head literally pop off and separate from its body. The larva will then stay a little longer inside the head before crawling out of its mouth. There are actually several fly species that have found ways to exploit the evolution of ants. As we know, ants share food with each other by regurgitating into each other's mouths. And some African fly species have found ways to mimic the ants' feeding signals by touching certain spots on their mouths. This allows them to essentially mug ants and force them to give up their school lunch if you still don't think ants have it that bad, just wait, because when ants aren't getting their insides liquefied and sucked out or having their food taken by force, they are often the victims of some of the most complex manipulation techniques known to man. Meet the Alcon Blue Butterfly, whose entire existence relies on mooching off the hard-working ants. The Alcon Blue Butterfly is completely defenseless. It literally has nothing, no armor, no weapons, nothing. What it does have are pheromones that are almost identical to those of ant larvae. So when the caterpillar drops itself down to the jungle floor, the ants quickly salvage it and treat it just like their own larvae, bringing it back to their cosy colony with some serious VIP treatment. What's even worse is the fact that this caterpillar can actually mimic the sound of their queen, so it will also get special treatment over their own larvae. For example, if there is a shortage of food, it will still be given food before the ants own larvae. The larvae will stay with the colony for over two years before hatching and flying out of the nest without even sending a thank you card. Another creature with similar tactics is this snail, which secretes a lot of slime that ants love to eat. The ants, therefore, believe it to be food and bring it back to the nest. But after arriving, the snail stops creating slime and is basically given diplomatic immunity because the ants no longer see it as food. The snail then just stays there, eating their food without contributing at all. Unlike the fairly harmless butterfly and snail situation, this next animal not only kills the ant, but does it in the most manipulative and complicated way possible. You see, this fluke worm infects an ant and then takes control over its mind, making the ant climb up a piece of grass and clamp its jaw shut. It can stay in this position for months until a grass-eating animal comes along and takes the ant with it. This might be the end for the ant, but the story does not stop there. You see, the fluke worm 
then works its way over to the liver of whatever animal ate it. It then feeds on whatever the host is eating until it lays its eggs, which are eventually excreted. Now you might be wondering how this even relates to ants anymore. Well, as I said, this is unreasonably complicated. Basically, the eggs will lie in the animal waste until a snail comes along and eats them. They will then hatch and irritate the snail, to the point of getting ejected by the snail in a puddle of slime. And if you remember from earlier, ants love snail slime. So from here, the ants will once again be infected by eating the slime, and the vicious circle continues. There is also a fungus that basically does the exact same thing. It will infect an ant, take control over its mind, and make it climb up to higher ground before literally bursting out of its head, eventually taking over the entire body before releasing spores, infecting even more ants. So far, we have only gone over threats from other animals, but just like humans, the ant's biggest enemy is itself. Ants will regularly wage war on other ant colonies, and the outcome is just as bad as you think. Besides the massive amount of casualties, the victorious colony will also abduct all the eggs and larvae from the losing colony, raising them to become slaves. What's interesting is the fact that the enslaved ants will eventually take revenge by killing the young of the colony, as well as the adults, sometimes wiping out over two-thirds of the colony. There are countless other ways ants have it miserable, but some species of ants are just downright screwed by evolution. We do, for example, have this ant with a super wide head called the doorkeeper ant, basically designed to keep intruders from entering their nest. This may seem pretty cool until you realize that their entire existence comes down to being a door, which is kind of depressing. We also have this species from Southeast Asia called Colobopsis explodens, which will make a lot of sense in just a second. These ants have massive glands beneath their abdomens, which they will use as a last resort when protecting their nest. They will force the glands to burst, making the ant explode and cover their enemies in a toxic, sticky, glue-like substance, eventually neutralizing it. We also have this new office which I will be using in upcoming videos, so please do comment down below on what you want me to fill it with, because for now, all the shelves are empty except our precious silver play button, of course. I think I will add one new item every video related to the given topic of the video, kind of like a memory wall of sorts. But anyway, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and watch some of my other videos on screen, and I'll see you in the next one.